You can fix just about anything on a boat with some Dyneema and some duct tape. Your boyfriend annoys you? Dyneema, Dyneema and, and duct, duct tape. tape. Hi guys and welcome back on board Paul is still for a special video We are currently at the yard and uh, this, what you see, it's a little bit of a lie This is not how the boat looks right now Looks uh, like this in my eyes What glasses do you have? Probably need some glasses You probably don't want to see how Paul is still looks right now A year ago we were arriving in Martinique after 17 days at sea across the Atlantic from Cape Verde And right now, if everything had gone according to plan, we would also be in the middle of the Atlantic Things did not really go according to plan and bottom line, we are here. Though, in the two months before we almost crossed the Atlantic, we prepared ourselves just the same way we did last year. And we had a big plan to put together a bunch of videos and content about Atlantic crossing. This video is one of those videos. Just a bit of a disclaimer before we start, this list is highly personal. I know that it differs for different people and different boats. Ryan also classified it in order of priority and I may or may not agree with everything. You will agree. <laughs> Number 12. Okay, so one thing that I wouldn't cross the Atlantic without is a galley cookbook. Not whatever cookbook, but a galley cookbook. This one is the Great Cruising Cookbook. There are tons of them. The Boat Galley has a good one too. Love their podcast. Last year when we crossed the Atlantic, I did not have access to a cookbook. And after five days at sea, I found myself lacking inspiration because at the end of the day you cook three times during a day and, and eating and cooking food is really what paces a day yeah and i found myself having to contact my brother to ask him for bread recipes multiple ones because they were not all successful and i really wish that i had a cookbook on hand that specific to uh, the specificities of boat life and passages uh, this contains a lot of really good tips about how to store food how to provision it's really good I thought you were making a cookbook. Yes, uh, it's been a year since I told myself that I was going to put together all the recipes that I cooked when we crossed the Atlantic ourselves. I wanted to have it done for this video. I did not, I have no excuse. Maybe one day I do it. Okay, number 11. We did a very poor job during that Atlantic crossing of providing ourselves with enough entertainment to keep ourselves occupied for what 17 days. What are you talking days. about? Am I not enough entertainment to you? It's uh... 17 days, baby. We only had, I think, two playlists on Spotify. It was like country icons and rock around the clock or something, like yes. 50s and 60s. We knew those playlists inside and out. Elvis Presley get a little old, I have to admit. We had just a couple podcasts and a few books on the Kindle. So our big recommendation for number 11 is to have plenty of music downloaded, have plenty of podcasts, uh, I know you have a Kindle, which is great for books because you can just load on as many books as you want. It takes no extra space and they're all at your disposal. Yeah, I think that it was our Atlantic Crossing's biggest fail was the, the, the only two playlists that we had on Spotify because I have become a, a big uh, country expert. Number 10. Okay, so for obvious reason, I would not cross an ocean or go on any type of passage without my film gear. And I don't think that you need to be a YouTuber to bring film gear with you. What happens after a few days at sea is that you completely forget about what actually happened on the second, the third, the fifth or the, the tenth day. Because the days tend to blend together and filming little snippets, even for yourself, of day-to-day -day life on board is really fun to look back at. And, and I know it because I edit all those videos that you guys watch and, uh, and every time that I look at the footage I forget that those little things happen and it's, it's just a fun thing to look at and remember. You don't need to bring five cameras, super advanced lenses and big microphones but just filming little snippets with a phone or a GoPro uh, it makes for really really fun memories especially of something that big and important as crossing an ocean especially for the first time, it's pretty big. Number nine. This one is kind of a strange one. It's earplugs and face masks, and maybe one wouldn't wonder why we're saying that, but the boat is incredibly loud while crossing the ocean. 
when you talk about face mask, we're not talking no. about 2020 face masks. Not 2020 face masks. Although mask. these days you would need them. We're talking about the other one, the, the eye mask. mask. Yes, the eye mask. Because sometimes, well, with us doing short-handed sailing, we were getting our sleep during the day, like weird times of the day. So putting some earplugs in and covering your eyes was a good method to try to get a little extra sleep. A boat is incredibly noisy when it is underway and just being able to cutting yourself from the noise and from the light is really helpful to get some sleep and especially when you do it shorthanded and every minute of sleep that we could get was really precious. I am a little bit mixed on the earplug thing from a safety perspective because sometimes I didn't like to have the earplugs in because I wanted to hear either what was going on outside or be able to hear you if you needed something. So if I knew like the winds were picking up or something was gonna change, I typically wouldn't sleep with them in. So I'm a little mixed on it, but some nights it was very nice to put the earplugs in and just get the noise out. But you know, when you're on watch, your job is to make sure that the other person can get as much rest as they can. So unless, if there is a real emergency, you know that the other person would come and wake you up. It's not that big a deal. Number eight. Okay, and that would be bringing with you currency from the country or the island that you want to make landfall at. Ultimately, we made landfall in Martinique and they used Euro, so for us it was not a big deal, but if you plan to make landfall in Grenada, St. Lucia, I think that it helps when you arrive in those very small places that a lot of time wouldn't accept credit cards. It is a tip that we get from, I don't really remember. I don't remember either. Tip, but I remember thinking that, yeah, it's really smart because it's the thing that you would not think about, so. Number seven. I really like doing the number thing here. I, I, a star map or a map of the stars. That's pretty much the same thing. When we were in the middle of the Atlantic from day one to day 17, I was absolutely puzzled by a star that would pop up at the exact same place every night. We had email exchanges with a few boats around us about that very particular star. And we just couldn't figure out what star it was. Uh, ever since, I always have this little app where I point at the sky and I can figure out stars. Uh, stars are really beautiful in the middle of the ocean. It is absolutely amazing to, um, you know, spend a few hours gazing at the Milky Way. Yay. I think we determined it was a UFO. Number six. Okay, this one is a little bit ridiculous, but trust me, after it's... seven days of sitting in the cockpit, it is not anymore. Good cushions for the cockpit. Yes. Good is underlined in, in big letters. Crossing the Atlantic, and especially when you do it shorthanded, is a lot of time spent in the cockpit, sitting or laying around in all different kinds of positions. If you don't have a, a comfortable position to sit in, it gets really old and sometimes painful. Do you remember the feeling of walking after crossing the Atlantic and how our legs were like kind of a little flubby? It was quite nice. We definitely were not completing our daily steps. And during the Atlantic crossing. This is, this is a 12 meters boat, Ryan. I know. We'd have to walk a lot. Back and yeah, forth. it was a really weird feeling. Anyways, get yourselves a really good cushion or a really good position that you can sit for prolonged periods of time uh, because you're going to spend a lot of time in the cockpit. Number five, Dyneema and duct tape. Yes, that's right. You can fix just about anything on a boat with some Dyneema and some duct tape. Your boyfriend annoys you? Dyneema, Dyneema and duct, and duct tape. tape. This is one thing, some Dyneema and duct tape that we found very, very useful. You can fix just about anything. This particular piece of Dyneema is actually cut to the longest length of our longest stay for the, the mast. So in case something breaks, we can use this as a, a stopgap. It's incredibly strong and it's very light. You can use it for tons of different things. Mm -hmm. In the first 48 hours of our Atlantic crossing, we uh, bent one of our whisker poles. That was not a fun event. It happened uh, pretty late during the day. We ended up fixing it with, I mean, we didn't fix it. We constructed a brace with stainless steel, duct tape and Dyneema. And we happily crossed the rest of the ocean with our- um, Bent whisker pole. With our bent whisker pole. <laughs> Number four. So one thing that we would never cross the Atlantic without and go on any serious offshore passage without for that matter is shore support. 
and your support is one or a few people that follow you all along from day one to day 17 and can help you with whatever it is that you would need during your passage from weather to maybe emergencies to random questions about checking in at the customs. During our Atlantic crossing, my good childhood friend Steven, who is not a sailor at all, but is really passionate about it, and Andy Shell from 59 North both acted as our shore support and they were incredibly awesome. Yes. Steven went, I think, above and beyond to try to find answers. We had little questions come up when things broke. And since we didn't have internet, but we had email access, he could take the question and kind of scour the internet or call the right people and find an answer. Andy was great on a practical side when a few things broke uh, that he's experienced before and gave us some tips and some solutions to figuring stuff out. So both of those guys, even though they weren't with us, were a vital part of our crew when we were crossing. Mm -hmm. We contacted them about every day through our satellite email and uh, it was also a fun way for us to pace our days, uh, being in touch with our shore support. I do think though, it, it, it's really important for your shore support. It's just like a member of your crew. So it's really important that you trust the person that's gonna act as your shore support. And if you don't have maybe somebody that you really trust or like are confident in, there are some services out there that can act as shore support for you. And I think Andy's even started a Yeah, a it's service. right. It, Andy is now doing that professionally for anybody. I think that was kind of based on him providing that Provide for, us. for us. He really <laughs> liked doing it. And then after that, he was like, I'm going to start doing this. So there are some really good people out there that for a really reasonable price will kind of be your, your eyes on land. Yes. Uh, and, and follow along. Now we're getting into the good stuff. Number sorry, sorry stuff. three, the medical kit. Ta-da! So this is actually a third of our medical kit and it is a part of our pharmacy. If you follow this channel, you remember that a year and a half ago, I burned myself offshore seven days into a passage between Malta and Spain. We're not going to comment on how it happened. It was stupid. We can all agree on that. But as with most accidents, it happens for a stupid reason. It was a pretty severe bird. And Ryan and I had trained ourselves. We went to a Knowles Wilderness First Aid course. So we knew a little bit about how to deal with the situation. And we had a first aid kit on board. But we realized that we were not equipped to deal with something really far offshore. We had enough that we could reroute the boat during a passage to go to shore and seek medical help there or maybe call for an evacuation, but nothing to deal with any type of serious injury, illness or whatever medical emergency in the middle of nowhere when help is several days away. So with that in mind, we created a medical kit together with a doctor that helped us put together a pharmacy that contains medicine, prescription medicine, for a very wide range of illnesses and ailments. Yeah, it's everything from antibiotics to uh, skin creams for like fungal infections to uh, even like antipsychosis meds in case somebody goes a bit crazy on the boat. So not me, I'm always okay. And we also have a box this size full of band-aids, different types of size. And if we were to injure ourselves, we would be able to change bandages for several days until we reach shore. Um, I think that was the biggest lesson we learned with your injury was that a wound uh, offshore, like a week offshore, takes a lot of bandages, mm -mm. And a lot more than we had like suspected. So having that amount for one person, and maybe there's multiple people with an injury over time, you really need a good amount of stuff just to make sure the wounds are protected and cleaned. And I think we learned that and we yeah. created our medical kit appropriately. A lot of you will probably ask us, but how do you go about finding a doctor that could prescribe you such a kit? Typically, cruising clubs will be able to put you in touch with a doctor that will also be able to understand your situations. Ships pharmacy are not something abnormal. Uh, they're pretty common. You have, to, you have to look for it, but it exists. So another vital piece of medical kit we have is a list of all of the medications and equipment that we have on board and that's put into a google doc and it has the the drug and the amount uh, that we have our doctor has access to that we have access to that on the boat and our shore support has access to that 
On top of all of those lists, we have our doctor's phone number, which is really great. So if something does happen while we're offshore, we can give him a ring on the satellite form or our shore support can give our doctor a ring. Yeah. Number two. Until a few weeks ago, this item was actually at the number one place of our list. It's, it's not anymore and we're gonna explain why. But it's still a very important piece of kit that we would absolutely not cross the Atlantic without. So if you might have noticed on our list, there's been a few times where we've said, oh, we've talked to shore support or somebody on land or somebody off the boat. How did we do that, you ask? Well, we used our Iridium Go, which we purchased through Predict Wind. When we started sailing, we first started using Predict Wind and I had done a big research on what the best weather forecasting tools out there were. And I really liked Predict Wind because they had a bunch of different weather models. They seemed to be continually innovating and they had a number of tools like weather routing, departure planning, ocean currents. So I thought that was great. And when it came time for us to buy an Iridium Go, I noticed that Predict Wind was actually selling all the hardware through their website, but also providing the subscriptions for it. So it just made sense for us to use Predict Wind and buy this and have a seamless system. Doing that also allowed us to have a cool tracking page on our website and then send updates as we were going on. So. Some of you who really follow us noticed that across the Atlantic, Sophie was letting you know when we caught a fish and what was for dinner. <laughs> so that was that's all been really awesome and is one reason we've kind of used that whole system. So this this number two is actually our Iridium Go with Predict Wind because they were both really vital. When we decided that we were going to cross the Atlantic again this year from Europe to Curacao to go back to our boat, it was absolutely unimaginable for us to cross without an Iridium Go, our own so that we could get email and have our own shore support. And as you may know, we already have one. It's, it's right here on our boat in Curacao. And we essentially had three options to procure one. The first one was to get this one shipped to Sweden, where we were at the time, but it was gonna be way too expensive, way too risky, not an option. The second one was to buy a second-hand Iridium Go and then resell it once we would arrive here. But I also had an idea, which was to contact Pretty Queen and ask them if they would give us an Iridium Go for the crossing, and then once we would arrive, we would give it away to one of you guys. As you know, we ended up making the decision not to cross because we felt that it was too risky. And we asked Pretty Queen if they wanted the Iridium go back or if they would allow us to still produce this video and give it away to one of you. So thank you so much Predict Twin for understanding that sailing doesn't always go according to plan and uh, for the possibility we have to give it away to one of our subscribers. On top of that, when Predict Twin sent us this Iridium go, they also sent us the marine kit. The full marine kit. Little antenna, some big boofy cables, a mounting kit. This uh, marine kit's really awesome because the, the satellite signal is really weak and having a clear line of sight for the Iridium Go uh, is it just helps so much with the download speed. So it's a big difference from five bars to four bars to three bars on how fast you're gonna get your email or your weather updates. So the marine kit's top notch. It is a couple hundred bucks extra, but absolutely worth it in our opinion. So yeah, one of you is gonna get the whole package. It's so exciting. All right, do you wanna talk about the number one thing that we will absolutely not go on an offshore passage without? Number one, peace of mind. And what I mean by this is everyone's gonna have a little bit of anxiety and excitement before they go, and that's gonna leave a little bit of unsettledness in the stomach. And I think that's quite normal. But by peace of mind, I'm saying that you believe that that everything is under control. You trust your crew, you trust your boat, you trust that you've done just about everything you can before you go offshore. And with that, that creates a, a peace of mind feeling. And I think we realized just how important that was during this last trip, which we decided not to go on, that we just didn't have the peace of mind to go and it was going to ruin the trip and the experience for us. So we decided not to go. And that is the most important thing you can take with you while crossing an ocean. Ultimately, we believe that having an Iridium go on board and having it through Pretty Queen is a huge part of getting that peace of mind, knowing that you have reliable contact with shore and a reliable source for weather forecast is it's huge. So with that said, we're really excited to give this Iridium go from Pretty Queen away to one of you. And here is how it works. Oh, 
If you want to win this Iridium Go from Predict Twin, head to Instagram, post a photo of your boat, and in the caption, describe what your sailing plans are for 2021. Don't forget to use the hashtag Ryan and Sophie Predict Twin. Tagged Predict Twin in your post, tag us in your post. I know it's a lot of tagging, but it is just so that we can find your post to determine a winner. In two weeks, we are going to make another video about satellite communications on a sailboat. And at the end of this video, we will announce the lucky winner. Now, if you're close friends of ours, we are not giving this away to close friends of ours. We don't think that's Good try. fair. Nice you try. can try, but it's not gonna happen. Ni so. Nice try. Share this video with your friends who you believe could use a new Iridium Go. In our eyes, anybody going on offshore passages could use one. It is a great piece of kit. Um, I'm really happy that we have this opportunity to give it to one of you. Again, I think I've said that 10 times over the course of this video. Thank you so much, Pretty Twin, for uh, doing this for our subscribers. It's great. Uh, so we're curious, what are things that you would not cross an ocean without? Uh, obviously, our list is very personal. I'm sure that you guys have a lot of things to contribute with. So leave it in the comment section. I'm super excited to hear about your thoughts. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like our channel, consider subscribing. It helps us a lot. And if you want to support our video production, check out our Patreon page and consider joining us there. That's right. We we're, got lots of extras there. We're quite, we're quite a fun crew, I think. I think so. This WhatsApp group was awesome. Yeah, we did a little WhatsApp group for our Patreons. All right, well, see you there or see you next time. Bye-bye.